so powerful because when I'm in this room and all you educated um, uh, native people, it's so awesome and we're pushing for culture and language and it'll be really nice to see people speaking all day just the language only. And I think that would be such a powerful thing. Can you hear me? Okay. My name is Tania Wilbert. Um, I am a high school student. I'm a junior. And I come from the Fort Ballard Preservation in Montana, but I currently live in Pennsylvania. Um, so, and you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm your board member, Charlotte Davidson, and we're going to cover some of the um, some of the key points that were discussed um, for some of the questions that we covered. So, for question one. Um, question one, we had some groups um, from Alaska and they talked to their um, staffers and some of their representatives, I think, and they said they were very aware of some of the issues they were talking about and very supportive of them and they were a little bit surprised that they knew so much and um, they, were, they were from California. Okay, they visited the representative from California and they said they were very hungry for information on a lot of the things they were talking about. They wanted to know more. And then from New Mexico and Arizona, they wanted more data and references, um, documentation and things like that too. Okay, so from question two, um, what did you learn in your conversation? And um, When you're applying for grants, the senator was, would like to be aware so she can support it. She wanted to know more about grants and um, um, information and things like that. They wanted more training and role playing and that could be what they expected in offices and emails, faxes, things like that so they would know more. And also youth advocates. Um, yeah. Okay, so we had some youth advocates, for instance, from Close Up, and this young woman, for instance, you know, she's not affiliated with any type of a youth organization like that, but her stories and other stories from our youth are um, equally, if not more, strongly impactful when they share these, um, the issues that they may be encountering regarding Indian education. And a lot of our members, um, would appreciate maybe more one-on-one -on -one advocacy training and again you know role-playing what to expect in offices in terms of you know protocol that type of thing and um, and another uh, suggestion that was mentioned is um, composing thank you notes to extend appreciation um, for the visits okay. and for number three some suggestions that were received are um, the members expressed that they appreciated hearing stories from other tribal members regarding um, their what, what they're experiencing with an Indian education pro, um, programs. You know what's working for them, what's not working for them, whatever's working for them. You know that's something that they can weave into their existing programs as opposed to reinventing the wheel and um, trying to figure things out on their own. Um, another thing that our members would like to see are, is a listserv of updates. Um, so I think that's something that um, our membership really strongly desires. And let's see. I think also to dovetail with that um, suggestion, um, a member said that a listserv would also, uh, also enable our members to put forward questions and receive answers from other members regarding issues that they may be encountering within their work. And another suggestion is possibly um, establishing a publication geared for more toward our youth. And um, one final suggestion was, um, so higher education programming, our folks here can work with secondary programs to strengthen our academic pipeline. And for number, or to, to just add to that for the youth programs, I attended Close Up last year and also College Horizons, and I think programs like that that, er, that um, are 
really publicized and that a lot of youth know about is really good. And I think it should be out there more because um, they're really en enriching and really good programs. Um, and for number four, all right, um, some big ideas were um, um, being here and just um, or being here to establish our presence and to make our voice known and heard. Um, and establishing coalition with other minority entities. And to start earlier um, and to be more proactive. And for number five, what advocacy efforts will you undertake once you return to your communities? And from the Montana tribes, um, the tribal council, council there, some of our group members are developing action plans and creating coalition of tribal leaders by region. And in Alaska, they're, okay, they're reporting back to their communities and keep in touch with senators and representatives regarding data. And um, I think that's pretty much it from group two. So we had some really uh, great responses from our group, uh, group three back here. Uh, for question one, the general responses uh, from legislators and staffers uh, about the message that we were giving, uh, really there was a lot around a lack of understanding of Native people in general, a lack of understanding of the trust responsibility and they really just didn't have a lot of knowledge, um, particularly when, when they had to meet with some of the, the junior staffers. Uh, but we did have some that met with, uh, with representatives that were very, very responsive. Uh, and I think this group already alluded to that, but those that met with uh, Representative Pelosi staff actually met with uh, senior policy advisors and, and they were very responsive, had a lot of questions, uh, really wanted information. kind of a general theme of, of those who already are supportive and advocate on behalf of natives and their native constituents tended to be supportive and those who don't didn't seem as supportive. So there, there seemed to also be kind of a, um, a line um, between parties. For future advocacy on question two, uh, what did you learn in your conversations uh, for future advocacy? That there really needs to be awareness um, of future bills and the all, um, this was uh, were recommendations from some of the staff awareness of future education bills and attaching possibly some of the the pieces of the Native Class Act as amendments to those bills to try to work in those pieces um, it was important for our group to understand the voting record and needing information about their legislators that they were meeting with to have information on their voting record and where they stood on some of these issues so that they went, went in armed with that information. Um, they also wanted to have the advocacy session that we have with Greg earlier in the day so we get all that information. <laughs> uh, and info, the info packet uh, that you get, the briefing papers, uh, in terms of advocacy, having that sent out before you actually arrive for those of you who are pre-registered was one of the suggestions. Uh, and also, Beyond the, the briefing papers that we provide to uh, the offices that we go to visit, having another information packet on just kind of a native 101 um, so that they, they understand some of those issues. So on question number three, NIA's role to sustain interest uh, from our, our members in advocacy. Um, one of the suggestions was having 
particularly around uh, Native Class Act, and since we focus so much on cultural and, uh, culture and language, is to have more of a presence of Native speakers uh, in these meetings to, in terms of that advocacy. Um, strengthening the link between the national issues that we're dealing with with NIA and the local and community level uh, issues that our members are dealing with. Um, possibly developing webinars to support our members to understand uh, the process of legislation or other leg how they can advocate on the local, tribal, community, uh, regional, state level uh, in, their home, uh, in their home communities. Having individual state information on legislation that's going on uh, in various states uh, in terms of our members on our website so that we're all updated and can support one another. There was a lot of focus on, on mobilizing and helping our members to mobilize more at the local and regional level. So the big idea, um, again, needing to, to educate staffers, uh, particularly around, um, our, or I'm sorry, educating our, helping to educate our tribal council members about, um, about education issues and, and legislation and how we can get them more involved. Um, having more coordinated NIA advocacy uh, sessions for our members throughout the year beyond just the le legislative summit so that we can continue the momentum. And um, the point that um, Charlie Bros brought up yesterday when he, or Monday when he was speaking about uh, exploring the possibility of utilizing the judicial branch around some of these issues. And as they returned to their communities, our group talked a lot about following up with their representatives uh, and their senators uh, on their meetings and establishing a relevant framework for their communities and how they can support future plans in their communities. Uh, also, uh, some of them are providing a written report to give back to their tribal councils on what happened uh, here this week, what some of the issues were, um, and creating briefs. Um, that can serve as living documents to provide for uh, continuity to provide to our tribal leaders. And I think that was it. Okay, all right, we're on. All right, group four. Um, we just kind of, instead of talking about, we just went ahead and did very supportive, neutral, or not supportive. And some of the people that were in our group, the people that they had visited were Udall, Johnson, and they were the very supportive. Udall, Johnson, Conrad, Bacchus, Tester, Gervala, and Kyle, and of course, um, McCullough which we have gone to. And then neutral is kind of Co uh, Coburn and a representative from New Mexico. Uh, and we have some more very supportive. Uh, Valdoza and Bingaman. Uh, what did we learn and recommend? What did we take from these meetings? Um, another organization, AHEC, was there, and they were more, there were, if other education organizations are here, like we had the high school students, the close-up, and AHEC was here, and if we know that they're going to be here in advance, if we could collaborate with them, because some of the things as far as tribal colleges, tribal funding, um, that would be very, very good to give them our talking points, we take their talking points, and it's a more collaborative effort. Um, Many of the, one of the other things is many of the scheduled meetings that we had scheduled, they were already supportive. And some of the people in our, our group said, you know, we need to reach out to those ones that aren't supportive or neutral or don't know about Indian education issues. And if we um, could reach to them, then they're going to start voting, maybe the ones that are neutral. And then maybe the ones that are not supportive, they're going to be more educated. Uh, we need background on the people that have visited group two and three also said that as far as what is their voting record, what, what are they for, what are they against, so that we can uh, go into those meetings armed and aware of how, where they stand. 
Um, more coverage on the eastern states. A lot of coverage was given in the, uh, the west and midwest. As far as eastern states, there weren't a lot of people attending those, or we didn't have meetings set up. Oh, map on how to find folks. Those buildings can get confusing. Um, the office of, um, it's construction. Facility management construction needs to be included in the conversation because that was completely cut out of some of the talking points and some of the things that were addressed and that's many of our people in here have been affected by that. Need to we need to encourage members to bring documents, things to deliver to Congress who are neutral and not supportive. Um, oh, written stories. So if we can send out something like if you're attending if you're planning to attend the legislative summit, that you go ahead and have an action plan before you come. So if we can get letters from the community and if we get the pre-information about the Native Class Act, then I could have went out in my community and said, can I get some stories from you all? Because that's what the, a lot of the Congress people wanted. They wanted those personal stories from those communities. So if I could have those ready to take with me that are behind that little briefing sheet to say, Here's, the, here's our talking points, and then here's my letter from my personal community. Um, make sure that legislative summit scheduled after um, the budget has been sent out, but of course, um, Robin had said sometimes that's not, we're not able to do that. Communications on appropriation staff, they didn't understand um, Indian specific dollars. Uh, we met with the staff on appropriations and he didn't have a clue on Indian education and he just wanted more information on how to make the language on appropriation bills and things more Native American Indian, American Indian friendly. So sometimes the language they put in those appropriation bills tie our hands. So if NIEA could give that information to him, he would be receptive to taking it. These are all of our positive that we have taken from the Legislative Summit. We love the first day, the groups being able to go and talk about specific situations. And as for me, I got to list, hear other stories. So when I went to those meetings, I said, this is also affecting these other tribes. This is what we talked about in our group before we came. So I could go and talk about these other issues in those meetings. Um, if there was a booklet we can get ahead of time, I guess the information sent out earlier, um, but the booklet was great. They loved the booklet on Indian education, the state of Indian education, where legislation is sitting right now. We love that. I'm gonna take that home and review it some more. Um, the reception, wonderful, we love the reception. <laughs> we love the food, the entertainment, and good breakfast. And we want to continue sharing of students' projects. That was a plus. Having the students involved is, that's why we're here. So that was a big bonus for us. And having those students attend those meetings for us was awesome. Um, and then the diversity of attendees. We had so many different Indian education walks of life attending and in here. So it, it, it opened up that dialogue. And some of the things that we, some of the non-positive that I guess we could work on is um, the panel sometimes not having enough time and you know there's so much that we need to get in during these two or three days it's just like oh what can you do and how can we make our time more effective um, and then me coordinating of close-up student projects because some of my kids didn't know about the Native Class, class Act and I was like ah and if you could some I don't know if all of you all know this um, Close Up in NIA has collaborated, so our students are actually over there learning about the government and it's a week-long project and I get them at noon and they go with us to those meetings. So that is a way some people are bringing them here at the conference, but there's also a, a week-long crash course in government that these students and in federal Indian policy, all of that that they're getting this. So if you can encourage your students to participate or bring them or they're with us during the legislative summit, but they're also experienced Washington, D.C. on their own as well. 
And what did we learn about being an advocate for NIEA? The presence of students were effective and, and it changed the tone of the meeting. It was casual stopping by and dropping off packets, utilizing our students to do the legwork to every office creates a buzz. So even if, even, and maybe that's something that we could look forward to the future, is we have scheduled meetings, but we're by, going by other offices. And if we could just have those extra things to just, oh, knock on the door, can we leave this with you? And have those students do that, that would be awesome. Um, and then that one's really nice. How are we going to be advocates at home? Um, people at home do make a difference um, by emails and letters. So as stated in group two and three, three, if we could get that, if NIA could send that out to us, these are the things, talking points, and then have, and then us at home can send that to people, please forward this to your senators and representatives. Um, and then sending out thank yous, follow up thank you and saying, hey, Thank you for giving us this time to meet with you. And we just want to remind you some of the things that we discussed in the meeting because we're still at home really wanting uh, these things to be addressed. Um, putting packets together for tribal councils, tribal um, governments, getting, give info to non-native administrators. Um, if we can do an email, do a text email blast. So as far as if you can afford that and we're like we're going to have a specific time because as um, my assistant chief said he was a state representative and he said if I get letters we don't really look at those and then if I get an email here, an email here, and an email here. But if there's a designated time to where everybody's sending these emails and they see chunks of 40 to 50 emails saying the same thing that's a voting block, so they're gonna pay more attention to that than they would this random email, this random email. Um, NIA reps board members to attend state conferences to hold focus groups to help, help our, the regions get organized. Some of our people in our states and regions are like, well, I'm not, we don't know how to organize. As far as Oklahoma, we have Oklahoma Council for Indian Education and we meet and some of us meet informally, but as far as other states, they haven't, they haven't had that time or direction to help start something from grassroots level. Um, set aside time for action during the next conference, maybe just in 30 minutes or hours to say, okay, now we're gonna text. Right now we're gonna text or we're all gonna call right now. We're all gonna send out emails right now. Um, and then run for office yourself. Have our Indian, Indian education advocates at, up in those offices because we need more of those. Thank you. We appreciate so much all the feedback that you gave to us. I know as an emerging scholar myself, I know that this is golden. And so hopefully, um, Colin, we're gonna be able to get these typed up and saved and send out everything right. They're gonna be on screen. We're gonna put them on our website. One of the keynote speeches is already on our website, so it will be available to you, and we will do that. Awesome, thanks. With that in mind, if you haven't filled out your evaluation form, please do so now. Take some time to do that. Um, I want to go ahead and call up Greg Smith, give him a few minutes to come and address the group. <laughs> 